Okay. Call the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Same for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Team Anthony here. Michelle Ginn here. Dan Green here. Mary Hember here. Allison McGann Kiesling here. Anyone from my absence? Ann Rose here. Julie Mary here. We have an addition to our agenda this evening, permission to post the position um, for a youth services, full-time youth services librarian. So we're going to move that agenda. We need a motion to approve that, to add it to the agenda, correct? Um, I think you um, need a motion to approve the agenda as, um, as amended. As amended. Okay. So we moved. Motion to move the, approve the agenda as amended. I'll second that. Yeah. Yeah, is there any questions on that or anything like that? All in favor? Uh, that's right. All opposed? The motion passes. Our call to public. Uh, so the friends have not met since your last meeting, but we do have two reminders, and that is the spring uh, general membership meeting is this Thursday here at the library at 7 p.m. We invite all of you to come. Hope you'll be able to join us. And at the end of the month is uh, our spring book sale again. And so that will be the 26th through the 29th. Busy time. Good. Um, no other public? Consent agenda? We move that we approve it as presented. Second. Oh, go ahead. Second. <laughs> Any questions or comments on that? All in favor? Uh, Opposed? <laughs> We got a pass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, library statistics. It's too early in the month for statistics. They're still compiling. They were. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> Friday was the last day of the month. So. Um, <laughs> that would make it difficult. Yeah, it would make it difficult, yeah. So, we are right to let you know that he's a little, he's a little behind. Could not okay. pay that back. We'll have to be on Double Monday. library statistics next month. Our library director's report. Okay, that we do know. Um, building and grounds, plans for phase three of three of our parking lot reconstruction project continue to move, move forward. I have a pre-construction meeting with our engineer and ASI on Monday, April 17th. The contractor is planning for this work to begin on Monday, May 1st. This phase of the project will be the southern portion of the parking lot, including the entire parking area. The work will be done in two halves, starting with the west half and progressing to the east half. The contractor anticipates the work will take three weeks. As a reminder, there will be a one-day library closure near the end of the project to, to lay the finished layer of asphalt over the entire lot in order to prevent a seam. We will give as much notice as possible of this closure, but weather will be the final deciding factor. Um, project updates. As reported last month, I spoke to the two teachers that will be coordinating the new construction trades program at the high school regarding the possibility of having their students build a shed for the library. The library board expressed interest in pursuing this option, so I spoke to the teachers again. They are quite interested in this project and recommended a fall build. I'm still investigating the details for this option, as well as looking into local professional contractors, and will bring a proposal to the board in coming months. But they were, the teachers were very excited about it. I think it's a great partnership. Yeah, I, I think so too. And that being through last month when I read about it, that was really It's a really neat thing that the construction mm -hmm. trades program is something new and they are looking specifically for mm -hmm. those kinds of projects. So Right, they're resurrecting that construction trades yeah. program. Which yeah, I think is a great right. program. Yeah. And the teachers that are going to be in charge of it are really excited. And they, when he said that um, they had opened it up that they were going to have, I think, 54 spots and they had all 54 spots filled, filled by 10th graders, and they hadn't even opened it to the 9th graders yet. So they were trying to figure out what they were going to do because there was more interest than they anticipated. So It's a good problem. It's a good problem to have. It is a good yeah. problem to have. So, yeah, so they're very excited about it, and, and um, it's nice that we may be able to offer them a project to work on. Um, oh, financial update. The field work for the library's audit went well and is complete. We have not selected a date yet, but anticipate the report to the library board will take place in May or June, as it usually does. 
Um, collaborations. The library will be closed on Friday, April 7th for a shared training day with the staff of the Brandon Township Library. We look forward to offering topics such as customer service, safety procedures, and department-specific training sessions. Um, on Friday, uh, the Clarkson Area Youth Assistance held the kickoff for their Pinwheels for Prevention campaign. During the month of April, um, Kaya participates in the national campaign by partnering with local organizations, including the library and businesses, to place pinwheel gardens around town to raise awareness about child abuse and neglect. The blue pinwheel is used as a national symbol for what childhood should be, carefree and filled with joy. Similar to last year, we will have a garden of blue pinwheels in the flower beds near the library's entrance with simple signage explaining the campaign. New to the campaign this year, Kaya is encouraging people throughout the community to wear blue on Mondays, as I am doing this evening. Um, during the month of April, also in support of this prevention campaign, Kaya and Care House will be hosting a training session at our library on Friday, May 12th at 8 a.m. for healthcare professionals and others who work with children to help them recognize the signs of child abuse and neglect, explain the reporting process, and address questions and concerns about this issue. So this is a nice partnership with the Clarkson Area Youth Just another reminder about the Friends Spring Book Sale. It's taking place Wednesday, April 26th through Saturday, April 29th. Um, the part that I'm going to add is that there is a link under the Friends tab on the library's website to sign up um, to the Sign Up Genius page so volunteers can easily sign up to assist. Um, and taking down the book sale is also a project on the list for Impact Weekend, which transitions into my next point uh, about what Impact Weekend is. If you don't know, as a reminder, Spring Impact Weekend is Saturday, April 29th and Sunday, April 30th. This is an event that takes place in Davisburg and Clarkston twice each year in the spring and in the fall to rally nearly a thousand community members to come out in force to volunteer on projects that serve seniors, low-income families, the homeless, special needs, churches, schools, and nonprofits. There are projects to suit all ages and abilities who would like to serve. What started many years ago as one congregation's The Church Has Left the Building service project has blossomed into a local movement to improve lives in the community around us. And you can find out more and sign up to volunteer at www.impact-weekend.org. Right. Lots of exciting things happening. First on our regular business, request for increase to budget for business collection. Okay. Um, Trevor Wynn, our new business and marketing librarian, started on Monday, February 27th. He's been working very hard assessing our resources and starting to make connections with the Chamber of Commerce and local businesses. Included in your packet is a proposal to increase the budget for the business collection by $4,200, making the total budget $8,200. This is actually quite reasonable considering that the previous business librarian had a materials budget of $8,000 in 2016. The budget was reduced to $4,000 when, when the 2017 budget was written because the previous librarian wanted to focus her energies in 2017 on other projects. As can be seen from the included proposal, our new librarian would like to incorporate an expansion of the collection as part of the development of the library's business center. And one of the other things that he is doing is also taking on um, a part of a collection um, that was previously under a different budget. So, um, but he's got his, his points of justification um, in the memo that, that is included in your packet. And I thought he spelled all of that out very nicely. Thank you too. Mm -hmm. Pretty clear. Um, and we would request these funds be taken from fund balance and added to 982.6, which is his business line item. Does anybody have any questions on this? It, it seems very reasonable to me, and I don't think it has, because we're expanding our small business, businesses in the area that we're expanding to. A lot of detail in it. I move that we approve a transfer of $4,200 from fund balance to line item 982.600. I'll second. So, any questions or comments? So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Okay. So, ever can get busy. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he's already very good. <laughs> Next, discussion of possible changes to the irrigation system by the Garden Club. 
The Parks and Farm and Garden Club has been taking care of the library's landscaping and flower beds for many years. Over time, they have added three children's literary gardens, an anniversary garden, and an edible garden. Garden Club's new coordinator of the library's landscaping is interested in having some additional sprinkler heads added um, to some of the gardens to automate the watering and some of these plantings. Um, and I'm pro I'll provide you with an overview of what's being considered. Um, I, the new person who is handling it is Joan Harbaugh. And I've met with her a couple of different occasions. And she was just in this afternoon um, wondering if she should be here tonight. And I said if she wanted to, that was fine. But um, I thought I had a pretty good handle on what she wanted to do. And what she's asking is pretty basic. Um, she's, she's got a couple things in mind. Um, one of the things that she's going to do is change out. Um, there are quite a few annuals that are, have been planted every year. And she is going to replace a lot of that with perennials to make it less work, which I think is a good plan. Um, but she's got a couple of places specifically in this new edible garden, where she thinks we need to have some um, additional sprinkler heads because they're doing a lot of hand watering of those tiny little plants. Um, so I asked her how she thought she wanted to handle this. And what they would, um, what she is proposing is that um, she, they would, the garden club would pay for it. And they would hire the library's irrigation company, Nature's Rain. Um, Mark is the person who's in charge of that. She would work with Mark and um, explain to him what she, what they wanted to add, and then um, they would pay for it. The garden club would pay for it. Um, so that seemed like a pretty reasonable proposal to me. Um, so today I had her um, kind of walk me through it, and what sounded like originally as, well, she was thinking she'd add some here and some there. She actually talked to Mark today. They walked the gardens together. She's actually only proposing the addition of two sprinkler heads. Was there an estimate at all on the cost? At this point, not yet, but um, but it would. She's sure that it will fit into the budget that the garden club has already. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Given to so. her, um, and that that because she's doing fewer annual plantings and and doing more perennial plantings, um, she's thinking that that a lot of the cost for what she would normally add um, will be less. And I think anything that cuts down on the. Uh, the workload. One hour. <laughs> <laughs> the workload of that, yes. yeah. I was a little concerned when she first first came in because it sounded like she had a lot that she was thinking about. And then when she talked to Mark, she, of course, they walked the, the, the perimeter. They, they He showed her where all the sprinkler heads were. They had a chance to talk. And he gave her some flags to put them in exactly where she she's talking to. <laughs> so it went from a whole big change. I think we're adding two sprinkler heads. Mark would be doing it, and he's the one who's done all of our sprinklers. He's the one who did all of the reconstruction after the parking lot project last year. So um, there's no money. There's no money for us. us. Okay. Um, but if you have questions or concerns, you know, please speak up, and I will take her back to her, and we can still discuss some other things. But their meeting is a week from today. Okay. Well, I I don't see any problem with it if they're bearing the cost, mm -hmm. um, because it's not. It, what it will do for everyone is keep everything looking fresher, mm -hmm. yeah. which is to our benefit and theirs because it decreases mm -hmm. the amount of work that they have to do to, to keep it up. So I, I can't see any. My any main concern was it. sort of the magnitude of what they were proposing well, yeah. and how much, that sort of thing. But then um, when she started talking to Mark and really digging into what it was they were planning, it, it turned out to be, I, I put it on the agenda and then I heard what she was actually thinking, like, oh, okay, well, this isn't such a big deal, but it, I wanted you to know about it because it is a change to library-owned equipment, right. so. Yeah. No, when I read this, too, I thought, wow, I wonder what, you know, looking for maps and everything. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's what I'm taking on. And, and, I, and I was thinking that might be where we were headed, and then she came in today and she's like, no, Mark and I walked, and she's like, I really only think we need two. So. <laughs> Great. So it's really That's I think a usual it, response. It, it is. Yeah. We're always grateful to the Garden Club for doing all of that and taking that and, and handling that. Yeah. Makes it more. So do we need a motion to uh, I I don't I don't think so. I just need to go back to her if you have any questions or if you have concerns or just let her know that we're very grateful that they're okay. going to do this and that they are willing to bear the cost and the time that it takes talking to you. It, it sounds like it's well she had some other some other ideas in mind that once we sat down and talked today were, were much simpler than when, than what it originally sounded like as well. So I think we're all on the same page and it's she's got some great ideas and, and I'm excited about what she has planned. Um, I think when she really looked at what the project was, she I think she realized that there wasn't it wasn't as 
as um, underwater as she had fevered. There were some sprinkler heads that she was unaware of. She was worried that the roses out front weren't getting up. And I said, well, two years ago they put sprinkler heads up there. And she's like, yeah, Mark showed them to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's easier now that they're a little bit, now that the weather's a little bit nicer. Well, they didn't do well last year, but that could have been because of the weird... It was 90 degrees for know, like it was a really <laughs> number of 90 degrees. It was so, really... It was very... Yeah, I, I think it was, you know, yeah. and we had universal a, problem. We had to make a huge budget adjustment just to pay for all the water to keep sure. that sod from down in last year. So. That was part of my worry was that they were going to put in so many additional sprinkler heads that we would need to make right. budget adjustments. <laughs> right. 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 right, if it were more than two, I... I would have raised but, that issue, but yeah. two additional sprinkler heads can't use enough. But if, water. if it turns out that they're going to do something more, I'll come back and let you know. Okay. Okay. Right. At this point, we're down to just two sprinkler heads. That Mark didn't seem to think that, okay. that it needs to be. He's the expert in that area. So he, is. Yeah. he is. Well, and this, this library is his baby, so he's been handling the irrigation system here for years. So. All right, that's good. All right, we'll move on to the review and approval of the FOIA policy. Okay. The library's director and attorney have been working on an updated Freedom of Information Act policy that will be in line with recent changes that have taken place in the law. The letter from the attorney that is included in the packet provides a summary of recommendations regarding the details of this policy. This policy was created by library law specialist Ann Sering. Um, and essentially, um, this, is a, this is a package FOIA policy that and has created for libraries across the state of Michigan. And instead of us contacting an attorney and writing a whole policy, what they have done is they have created a library policy that, that we can buy as a package, and it's very economical to do it that way. Um, and I, I contacted her, and she basically just customized it to our library based on the size of our library and made sure her name was all in the right place and that kind of thing. So um, this is actually a tried and tested policy meaning we're not the first library to get it. Um, but if you have any questions or comments on it, um, this is something that we need to have in place. Um, we don't get a lot of FOIA requests, but it is important that um, if you do get a FOIA request that you have the details of what your fee structure would be. Um, what you can you cannot charge unless you have a fee structure that is board approved. And also your time frames. Yep. Yep. Um, and the law changed a couple of years ago, and um, our previous policy was not um, not detailed enough to accommodate those laws. So. Well, I actually read through this. I found it very interesting and amazing the details that it's a good thing to know. I thought it was. Yeah. It will probably be our longest policy that we that we have. But I can't. I feel like. We are comfortable because any situation that would come up, I think, is probably addressed. In that. I think so. And so, I feel comfortable with that. Well, and it is it is appropriate to have a policy that is detailed in this way because when you're when you're discussing the importance of, of handing over public records, you want to make sure that you're that you're, you're doing it properly. And yeah. and while there are many cases in which if the record is available electronically, we would hand it over no charge, but if they're looking for something that we either have to create or we have to mm -hmm hunt down, so to speak, um, you, know, it's, you want to be able to have all of that laid out for people. And the, the summary version, um, the short version that's in the middle, is what would be posted on the website. Um, it is, the library director is the official FOIA coordinator for libraries, um, but then the actual um, creation and um, distribution of that information can be delegated out depending on um, what the department of the library that it needs to come from. And it does, it's very specific in terms of, um, you know, the, the employee that, that has the lowest pay, fee, pay structure um, that is able to produce that information mm -hmm. is the person that would be responsible for handling it, and, and all of that is laid out very specifically in line with the law. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. You need a motion to approve. You actually need it. Uh, it's a resolution, and we do need to take a roll call. Oh, this, this is a this is this is a fancy one. Yes, let's have one more. And there is a resolution that's right in the packet near the 
let's see. It's just past the letter. Do we need to read the entire resolution? We do not. Okay. But I thought you'd like to know where in the packet that it is, and then um, after you've um, approved it and we've done the roll call, then I will um, fill in the dates and, and how the how the roll call went, and I'll put it out for Mary to sign. Okay. okay. So then has everyone found the resolution? Yes. It's on Brown. It's pretty standard procedure. This is just how it's done, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. It was interesting, but... I mean, it was really interesting. I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. No. <laughs> you missed the thing. <laughs> I move no. that we approve the resolution as presented. Second. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's her turn. Okay. Jan Gaffney? Yes. Michelle Ginn? Yes. Dan Green? Yes. Mary Gimbert? Yes. Allison McFadden Kaysland? Yes. Marilyn Conway Epson. Ann Rose? Yes. Thank you. Okay. That concludes our business for this evening. Oh, no, we have our added item. Oh, the additional item. Correct. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> I am really awake. <laughs> I don't do this very often. That's I why know, I'm not and sure. I put it on the front of my agenda and put my agenda open. I try not to, I try not to do this, but sometimes things just happen. Okay. Our additional agenda item, a permission to post position for full time youth services librarian. Uh, it has come to my attention that our full time youth services librarian is being considered for a wonderful management position in the library system in North Carolina. While there is some chance that she may not be offered the post, we are quickly approaching summer reading and our busiest time of the year in the children's department. This is a crucial position that is involved in both children's and teen collection development and programming. The April board meeting is early, but the May, board, May library board meeting is mid-month. While we are genuinely hoping to keep this great employee, she is highly qualified for this new job, and it would be the next step in her career path. We should know for sure in a day or two. For these reasons, I feel it is prudent to ask the library board to approve permission to post this position should she put in her notice. She understands that if she is not offered the position, that we will happily keep her on our team. So, this is this is just a oh because of the timing. Just because of the timing. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's such a busy time. time coming up. It is. Yes. And and we, I can certainly see that you can't wait until May. And I don't want to call a special meeting if I don't. I, I appreciate that everybody comes to these meetings, and I try to spread things out so that, that your meetings are, are appropriate and not too long, not too short. But um, I didn't know how else to handle this one other than just ask for permission in advance. And I think it was a very good plan to do yeah, that. I do too. So good. Thank good time you. frame. Yeah. Yeah. She may know by tomorrow. Oh. So does that need a motion? Yeah. It does. There's a recommended motion at the bottom. I see that. Yeah. Do we have a motion to approve the, to get permission to post the position? I'll move that as presented, yes. Second. Any more comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion passes. Um, should she turn in her resignation? Um, be difficult for us, then we'll be able to move forward very quickly with posting the position. Thank you. And I think that's good. Um, we're not looking forward to that part, but yeah, I would. Uh, I'd like to make one comment. I I have mixed emotions about this because I'm happy for her if she mm -hmm. takes this, but I've been knowing Erin since she was a high school kid, and she was yeah. a barista over there at uh, at Caribou Coffee, and uh, I knew she was destined. The big things. Mm -hmm. I would miss her very much. Well, good for her. I hope she likes the her new place to live. That's a big one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a big, well, it's warmer than it is here. Yes. You know, it, it's, no, it's yeah. you know, it's a great opportunity for her. Yes. I, I hate to see her go. She's just been just a little bundle of sunshine she around is. here. Mm -hmm. She's bubbling all the time dancing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Have to move on when you think it's time to yes. Indeed. Um, 
No other, no other business. I guess we will adjourn. Do a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting for you, Dan. I've got voice enough for us. <laughs> Meeting adjourned at oh, 6 o'clock. Oh, wait, wait, Dan moved. Yeah, I got Dan's little button. Yeah, I second. Thank you, I forgot. Okay. It's all right. Six twenty-six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I'll I'm so done. <laughs> <laughs> never, we've never disapproved. Anyone who doesn't want it. That's yet. Okay, all in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll adjourn. Just, just <laughs>